Hi, my name is Ron Perry and I built my first craftsman kit in 2009 and since then I've built many craftsman kits from the likes of South River Model Works, Fine Scale Miniatures and Sierra West Scale Models. I love building craftsman kits and I know you will too. Just check out these videos to see if it's up your alley. You're watching Essentially Wood, a show about... Oh come on! It's a show about everything you need to know about building wood. Hey guys, my name is Ron Perry and today we're going to start a new series that I'm going to call Essentially Wood. This right here is the manual of a kit that cost me upwards of $250 or more. I can't remember how much exactly what it was. Because I have had this for a few years, but I've purchased over the years probably about four kits from this company and have built them for various people. I have one kit up there, so uh, two kits were sold. I have two kits. Um, so in this first episode or first diary because yeah diary is probably a better way to term this because I don't want to do a video of every single minute of me modeling but I do want to show some unhindered shots of me modeling. Um, at the same time, I know people like to see that, um, but you know, the story and the whole pitch of the show has to interest me. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to edit this stuff. If it's going to bug me like this being in the shot, I have to do something about it, right? So, uh, uh these are going to... Just put your comments in the below uh, about how you like this stuff. Let's get to the show. I don't want to waste my time or waste your time. So we've got the shipyard kit uh, at Foss Landing. In uh, previous videos, you've seen uh, Foss Landing. I've built two versions of it. Let's just get into this, shall we? So in this episode, we're going to be listening to some jazz. I like to listen to jazz when I uh, build models. Uh, this ma the, the manual here goes through, you know, all the stuff that you'd learn if you watch my previous videos. So we'll, we'll just skip that stuff. And when we get to right here, we've got something that I'd like to share. So... This guy uses uh, chalk that he scrapes off of uh, 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 Rembrandt, uh, you know, the pastel chalk things or whatever they are. They're just pigment. I don't know. What I've got, I've got totally different stuff. So this is what I've used. I've got uh, powdered tempera paint. Uh, this is commonly used as pigment uh, people use it uh, for various different things of making colors or or staining wood and stuff like that the thing is is that when you mix this stuff together as you can see it doesn't mix with the alcohol it's uh it just doesn't work that way and uh, in the instructions here Brett tells you to scrape off some powder from the 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 chalk the Rembrandt chalk whereas I you know I just don't like doing that like I've got this little tool here you, you grab a little chunk and you, you tap it out and I, I don't really like that I didn't find it to be you know it didn't give me the variation and it went overboard in spots and I just didn't like to, the lack of control so what I did instead was I put some uh, of my pigments in the bottom here, but instead of just using the raw umber or the brown or burnt sienna, 
I think this is burnt sienna. Um, and I added to that black because I want a more of a burnt umber color and I've got kind of like a, not a raw sienna, but a burnt, a burnt, burnt sienna. And I wanted it umber. So if, as you can see by adding black to my brown, which was red, as you can see in the videos, I've now come to a color that is more brown. Now, since then, I had a friend uh, deliver, send me some of this uh, uh, color pigments to try out, and I'll be trying that out uh, later. I, I forgot that I had this stuff. I received it just a couple of weeks ago, but I forgot I had it. But we're going to try this out before the end of the episode, or before the end of this series on another episode. So, when I talk about this stuff, we totally skipped a step. Now, the first step to graining and weathering our wood, as you can see, it is grained and weathered right here. We use a wire brush. Now, In the book here, he says, don't use uh, a brush with brass bristles because it'll color the wood. I have a problem with that because my whole purpose at this table right now is to color the wood. So I don't really get it, but I'm using brass. Call me a rebel. <laughs> So anyways, you want to take this brush and you want to shave off one side. You want to brush it off the whole board. And what that's going to do is, sure, that's going to put lines from your, your heavy bristles, right? That's going to carve some lines into the wood. But what it's also going to do is it's going to shave the wood so that there's going to be ups and downs and grains. And it's, it's just going to beat up one side of the wood is probably going to bend up like this on you. That's okay. Everything's all right. So after we beat it up with our, our wire brush, you don't have to go too long. I do 10 pieces at a time. Uh, uh, this is kind of important. It's in, you can see it in the video. I, I, I put my hand on one side, shave one side, put my hand on the other side and shave the other. Don't move them around and stuff like that. It's really hard. They, they, they'll they just get out of uniform and you'll just, it's just a pain in the butt. Next step is to put on our powders. Now, if you want to do it like Brett does, read, go buy your own kit and read his instructions. If you want to do it like I do it, I put a little bit of uh, powder in the bottom of this jar and the rest is just plain alcohol. No ink added, no none of that stuff. Just the powder and the alcohol. Now what I want to do with that now is I have a stiff bristle brush here. It's, it's really stiff. And uh, I'm going to get down to the bottom of the jar to get into the sludge of the pigments. I want to get the pigments into the brush with a lot of alcohol in it. I want it to be totally penetrated with alcohol. Then I'm going to brush the wood. Now this is going to give you some uh, spots where there's extra pigments and stuff like that. If you get that, then you come back with your brush and you put it into the top of the alcohol here and it's so diluted up there because everything's falling, settling down to the bottom. You're getting a diluted mix of alcohol. You can come back and then ride out that pigment onto the wood, spreading it out farther. So that's my explanation. Now let's listen to some jazz. I'm going to drink a little bit of my homebrew beer. wonderful now check out this video showing how 
I we weathered my boards in the first sense. And then at the end of the video, well, actually, I don't know if I'm going to put that in at the end. Every day in the news, we hear about how we're losing control of security. How about if I told you that you could surf the web in total security mode all the time? Tunnel Bear is that tool, and I got you 40% off for an annual subscription. Just go on over to modelersguild.com slash TB. Okay, I know some of you are visual thinkers, so let's go through this one more time. When shaving my wood, I do 10 pieces at a time. I put them on the table flat, and I shave one side, and then move over to the other side. I don't turn the, the pieces of wood around because there's too much fiddling involved and there's a lot more wood to be weathered and grained. So uh, doing this the most efficient way will keep you on task to get the job done right. I'll often make claims where I say that I've changed the technique. Now this doesn't mean that I didn't try the technique that was suggested. It's just that I didn't like the technique and decided to change it, is what the truth is. So as you can see, I'm adding my burnt sienna and then I'm coming back with my black to try to get the color to uh, go to a more of an umber color than a ready sienna color. Now when you start adding the alcohol it looks out of control and it's pretty uh, like it's really wild looking when you start getting it down and actually when after you've shaved all this wood and spent some time with it it's a little stressful to tell you the truth because you're you, it, it looks like you ruined the wood however if you just add plain alcohol you can spread that uh, extreme weathering out because it's not really uh, a stain it's you're, you're moving these granules of pigments around and and the alcohols embedding embedding it into the wood so uh, you just add more alcohol if you've got a spot that's too dark or too sludgy grab alcohol spread it out over the wood um, if there's still too much Try uh, taking your brush and wiping it off on the your your workspace so that you can uh, pull uh, start pulling pigments off and then adding alcohol to replace it or pick up more pigments to pull off. So now we can see that when I add this uh, mixture from the bottle, number one, it's adding this stuff much quicker number two it's more of a brown color now this second camera view isn't doesn't really show the brown as much as the other view and I've got to apologize for the the first camera view there it I zoomed it in and I messed it up I have a mess up every video guys I'm not perfect and that's why you come to watch me well guys thanks for watching another video and uh, maybe I didn't say it each video is gonna have a point and the point of this video was to add color and to add texture 
I think we accomplished that task and made it within 15 minutes, so uh, that's a good place to end the show. Please check out our sponsors if you want uh, things to improve in these videos. It's not going to improve unless you support the sponsors or go to Patreon. Let's talk to you later, guys.